This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting cyberpunk video. Today, we're taking a look at a sniper build I'm calling the Hand of God. Let's get to it. Become the Hand of God with this ultimate sniper build. Smite your enemies from any distance with infinite time dilation they will never know what hit them. With insanely high armor and immunity to all negative status effects, you are an unstoppable killing machine. Okay, to get the sniper rifle, you're going to come over here to the Bellevue Overwalk in Kabuki. So if I can actually like get it to show up there, there you go, that's where we're at. So once you quick travel over here, you're just going to turn around, jump down the side there, run down these stairs here, run down here, run over here, and then jump over the side, run through here. At this point, you're going to jump on the roof here. If you don't have double jump, um, I, I don't know, but uh, if you can do it with though, I assume you can do it without double jump. But anyway, once you're on the roof, you're just going to run across the roofs up here. And then uh, what we're going to do is jump over here. And then we're going to jump up here. And then you're just going to fall down here. And then turn around. And right there's your crafting spec. Free and easy to get. Okay, to get Fenrir, you're going to come to this location up here. We're all the way at the top of the map. You can see where we are here on the north side. You're just going to come up to the docks here, to that quick travel spot. And then there's a side job right here. You're going to go to that side job. You just once you teleport in here, you're just going to run down the way here. There's a monk back here. You're going to talk to him. He's going to give you a quest to go rescue his brother. So you just come back over here, this guy right here and uh just talk to him so then you get the option for where's your brother now he tells you and then you say i'm here to help and then after that you get the quest for save the monk and you can see where it wants us to go so we just got to run down the road here and once you get to the location there's going to be a bunch of maelstrom all over just go through and take them out and then once you've come through there and you've taken them out, the monk's right there. You can talk to him, but the gun that you're after is right there. So tell him he's safe. And then once you're done talking to him, you can pick it up right here. All right, so for all of the subdermal implants, you can get them all in one spot. So we are at the Kabuki Market waypoint right here. We're going to go to this ripper dock right here. So you just turn around and run right over here and there's the doorway and then he's right at the back of this and if we come down here and click on this you can see he's got all of the skin stuff that you could ever want all right so to get the eye and the trajectory analysis you're just going to come over here to victor you guys know victor i'll show you where he is on the map just in case you're super fresh he's right here you go to him during many times in the game so you talk to him and then i already bought it from him so he doesn't have it but he'll have this purple eye it's expensive be ready for it and then if you go over here to trade you can see there is the trajectory analysis and that's going to cost you twenty thousand eight hundred. So for the Vendetta mod, you're going to come over here, right here, you can see where I'm at, and that's in uh, the Glen. Once you teleport over to here, you're just going to run down the way here. There's an assault in progress over here. That's the one that we're after. So we're just going to run through here, run right back into here, and then take out these people back here. Okay, and then once you've taken them out right here in this bag, you can see Vendetta Mod. This is the only place I know to get this one, and as far as I know, there's only this one. Okay, so to get the heat sink, we're going to come over here to this ripper dock right here. And uh, there's no real super close. I mean, I guess this one's kind of close, but about as close as this one, as far as like waypoints to travel to, to quick travel to. So, you know, pick whichever one you want. He is right here. And then what I did is I just came in over the road up there and I jumped down over this way. And he is like, there's, it's a dock area and he's right back here. And you're just going to come in here. Say hey to this fella, go to trade, and right here's the blueprint. Now, if he doesn't have it, go skip time and then just come back. So we're gonna buy it now and I'll show you. So you just come outside. You have to come all the way out. Like you have to come all the way out to here and skip 
and he may or may not have it. If he doesn't, just go skip time again until he has it. This guy is also going to have the nano relays. So if you come down here to your nervous system, you can see right there, nano relays. Okay, so for the last two pieces of the puzzle, we have to go to the Ripper Doc fingers. So it, there's a point in the storyline where you're gonna have the option to punch fingers. If you wanna punch him, come here and get this stuff before you punch him because afterwards he won't do business with you. Otherwise, you can go through the story just when it gives you the option to hit him, don't hit him. So we're over here at the Cherry Blossom Market. You can see where I'm at. It's right near Jig Jig Street. So we're gonna go here. We're gonna go to Fingers. Fingers is right here. Now because it's on Jig Jig Street, uh, I gotta be careful what I show and I have to be careful what I show in Fingers area as well in his place because uh, it's not really appropriate for YouTube. So I'm just gonna kinda go over there and show you. It's kinda back in the alleyway. So you can see where he is here on the map. So that's where I'm just gonna head to. If you come over to here, he should highlight as well as this Ripper dock here. There's two of them side by side. You want this one right here. And then once you're inside his place, you just come all the way to the back room here and this is Fingers. I already bought the stuff from him, so he's not going to have it for me. But you should be able to get the inducer from him as well as this bad boy right here. So we're right here at the north side east and you can see where I am here on the map. I'll zoom out for you. Quick travel right to the east location, quick travel point right there. What we're after is this assault in progress right here. So you're just gonna run down the way here, right to it, it's right close by. And it's right in there, to get to it, we're gonna run around the side here. If you have these people here, just take them out and then you're gonna come around here and then there's gonna be a bunch of people in here. You're gonna have to take them out as well. All right, so once you've taken everybody out, you're gonna run to inside here and then you want this box right here. And there you go. There's the crafting spec for the armadillo mod. So for this one, because we spec'd so heavily into crafting, I kind of wanted to make more use of the crafting than finding random armor around the map. So I did not armor theme this one. Just whatever you picked up for crafting wise, make sure that it has the right amount of slots and craft whatever armor you want to craft. And look, however you want to look, it doesn't really matter as long as this has three, this has three, this has three, this has three, this has four, this has four. Then you're going to make sure you put armadillo mods on everything except for one piece you want to put on your crit chance and your crit damage. So get one bully, one Fortuna. If you're crafting a bunch of armor to try to get the right slots for some of these you're gonna probably just end up having those on your armors and you'll be able to just strip all the mods so like for example i had to craft a bunch of these in order to get uh three slots so i ended up with a bunch of mods all of these mods that i have here i got from just crafting those and the shoes were another one i was having problems getting on the mods showed up a bunch on the shoes now please note that not all armor will make mods when you craft it if you craft something and it doesn't have mods on it after you craft like one or two so for example this never has mods so if i craft like two and then we come over here to my backpack and you can see i got two of them here and they don't have any mods on them. If we come back over to crafting and we craft these here, these are a good one because they, they almost always have some mods and we craft a couple of those and we come over here, you can see mod, mod, no mod, two mods. One of which is our increased crit chance. So I find most of the time you're safe with crafting the pants. These shoes always seem to have mods on them as well. And then after you craft your armor, you're going to be really close to having your armor maxed out for that specific piece. So you can see here, this is 200. We're really close. This is uh, 100. We're really close. So once you just craft it, then you're going to come over here and then just make sure you cap your armor out with a quick upgrade. Okay, so let's talk about our character perks and attributes. So, technical ability, that's our main thing. You're gonna start your character with the most points in this. You wanna get this to level 18 as fast as possible. The reason being is that's going to allow you to create your sniper rifle as fast as possible. It's also going to allow you to upgrade Fenier as fast as possible. However, 
I highly recommend not upgrading Finier, and I'll show you why here in a minute until you're level 50. At the level that you get it at, it's so strong that it should just hang out and work fine for you for a majority of the game. If you upgrade it early, you are going to have to then upgrade it from there. So if you come over here to our crafting, and what I mean by that is this upgrade here. So if you have it right now, you can upgrade it to Epic Iconic, and then from there, you can upgrade it to Legendary. The problem is, is when you do that, it's going to upgrade based on your level. So the damage is going to be based on your level at the time. Now, you can cap that out at a later time, once you're max level, if you wanna bring it up to your max level stats. But in order to do that, you gotta come over here and upgrade it this way and spend a buttload of resources. So you are better off leaving it at its lower version for as long as you can. It, until you get to a point where the damage falls off like crazy. I highly recommend not even picking it up until you're around level 25, maybe even 30. At that point, it should last you well into 50 in its rare state. Okay, so anyway, back to our skills here. So level technical first. After you get technical to 18, then start leveling reflexes. After you get reflexes to 18, then you can start leveling either body or cool. It really doesn't matter. Body is going to give you more survivability. Cool is going to give you those big numbers that we love. Let's take a look at where we have our skills spec. So here we go. I'm just going to kind of browse through them real quick. Obviously, you want to prioritize the skills that are going to get you the most benefit first. So like get this, get this, get the ones that allow you to create the weapons that you're after. So rush to this as fast as you can. Then you want to get things that are going to make crafting those weapons cheaper and upgrading them cheaper, getting the mods back. You get the idea. Over here in engineering, we have this and we have this. Get this as soon as you craft your sniper rifle because the load time is bad. So you're going to want this. Now, when you have cold blooded and your skills inside of your reflexes tree, you can speed that reload time up significantly, but this is going to help you when you first craft the thing. And then you can put a perk in this whenever you have an extra perk to throw in here. Over here in reflexes, we only have perks in assault. We do not have very many perks in Assault. That is because I did not go for any of the perks that are behind cover. This is not a behind cover build. So any of those perks where it's going to do things behind cover, I'm not interested in that. Over here in Cool, we have a little bit in Stealth, very little in Stealth. We have this one, this one here, and then this one. So these are obviously just to increase your damage, give you that more of a damage boost. That very first shot there is going to do additional damage after you're in combat. Obviously, this isn't a stealth build. So afterwards, it's kind of meh. Get this one first here. Put points in these whenever you have points to throw in these. Cold-Blooded is a completely different situation. We have a bunch of points in Cold-Blooded. Cold-Blooded gives us a ton of perks. So obviously, Cold-Blooded. And then we have the increased duration. We have the increased armor. We have the increased stacks. We have a more increased stat. Where's the other one? And more increased stacks. We have increased health regen, increased headshot damage. And then this one here is super important. As soon as you can get this one, get this one before you put perks and other stuff because this causes it to last for freaking ever. So this here, it naturally lasts for 10 seconds. This boosts it to another 10 seconds. So now it lasts 20 seconds, stacks up to five times. And every time a stack drops off, it resets the cooldown. So it lasts a very long time once you hit max stacks. Over here in body, the only thing we have is athletics and it's just my normal go-to survivability stuff. So you have carry capacity because carry capacity, we have this because uh, you don't have to use any health pots or anything when you come out of combat. You kill everybody, you regen any health you lost. Then we have this one, just gives us more survivability. Then this one is just super, super handy. And part of the reason I went over in here so deep is because being able to move quickly and sprint constantly and reload is super handy. And that's attributes and perks. So remember, technical first, get all this crafting stuff taken care of, then move on to reflexes, get this filled out, then to cool, and then to body. Unless you're having a hard time surviving, then put points in body until you can level up this and then start putting your points into cool. Okay, so let's talk about our weapons real quick. So, the Ashura, as soon as you can craft this bad boy, you wanna craft it, put your Vendetta mod on it. Now, 
you don't want to break it down or swap until you have your technical maxed out and you have this ability here because you need to make sure you get that vendetta mod back so the first one that you craft of this is probably not going to be the best damage you know if you can afford to craft a couple of them pick the highest one that you got that's got the highest amount of damage and then later when you need to upgrade make sure you can get your mods back and then break it down and get your mods back so we have vendetta on this thing and then we just have a bunch of pacifiers on this thing i've shown where to get these before you can get these at any of the the weapon or a majority of the weapons shops if they don't have them just refresh their inventory a bunch of times until they do and i showed you where to get vendetta you will get the purple one of these as soon as you're able to craft the epic items you should start getting the purple ones just craft a bunch of those ideally this is the setup you want you're going to see a massive damage increase with this bad boy on the headshots once you get vendetta on here and once you have trajectory analysis that's going to give you massive increased damage to headshots so this is the setup that we're going for here on the Ashura. Now Fenrir is a little bit different. Fenrir, we just got a good scope on here and we got a silencer on here. I like the silencer because you can get some of those sneaky shots with it. If you slow down time and you sneak up behind an enemy, you can go stealth for a pretty long time before they realize what has happened. And then we just have a combat amplifier. You can craft these yourself and get the recipe for these, or you can just buy one. Uh, lots of the different gun shops have them. If you see one in the gun shop, just pick one up and slap it on this bad boy. It already has an insanely high chance to set your target on fire to begin with, and we just increase that even more. Okay, so let's talk about how this build plays. There's a reason I call this build the Hand of God because it allows you to just reach out and smite anyone at any given point of time before they even have any idea what is happening. So we got some test units over here. See them over there in the distance? They're hanging out. They're minding their own business. They're doing their own thing. Now, they're a problem for me. I don't know why, but they are. So we're gonna take them out. We're gonna slow down time and we're just going to go bam headshot make sure we get the next one bam headshot we we shot her so hard she just bugged out bam headshot so uh oh actually that yep there it was headshot so uh yeah there you go they didn't even have a time to realize what was happening or react before we were able to just completely wipe them out. Now, the interesting thing about this build is because of our cyberware and the way it's set up, we can essentially stay in slow down time for almost indefinitely. We have one second in between. If you look, our cooldown time on this is 4.5 seconds. The time that this lasts is a 3.5 seconds with a cooldown time of five seconds. This lasts for 14 seconds. So when this goes off a of cooldown, we can dodge and immediately activate another time slow and keep time slowed down. So I can do this. We have our time slowed. We're running around. We're doing whatever for, for a full 14 seconds. And then we're going to dodge and continue to shoot. So we can easily, I'm going to wait here. We can easily, goes off cooldown. We easily dodge. We have plenty of time here. And then, bam, we're right back in it again. Now, when you have to reload, you only get one shot with this gun. The whole being able to keep time slowed indefinitely is more for when you're using Fenrir. Now, when do you use Fenrir? Well, Fenrir is for situations where you are in close combat and you can't snipe or for specific targets that are invulnerable to tracer rounds, which the Tiger Claw is a good example of that. You cannot shoot them with the tracking rounds. They'll just bounce right off of them. Um, I'm not sure what else is. I know some of the cops are like the Max Tech are, um, but I'm sure some bosses maybe are. So when you have that situation and you can't slow down time and shoot them or you slow down time and you shoot them and it doesn't really matter because the bullets just ricochet off of them you can use fenrir to keep time let me look at those look at those damage numbers it's insane you can use fenrir instead and keep time slowed continuously because it has a much larger clip so if we reload here i don't know yeah there's some people here so uh, we can dodge and we have plenty of time in our dodge here to move around because as long as we stay aiming and then we're out and then we immediately slow time again and they just, they can't, they can't react. 
even if they can react, you take very little damage. If you are in a situation where you are taking or you think you're going to take a bunch of damage, all you have to do is throw down an electric grenade. Now, the electric grenade is going to damage you a little bit, but it has to because if we are immune to our own grenade, we don't get the effects from the grenade because it can't actually shock us. So I want to I want you to take a look here. If you take a look at my current armor, my current armor is at 9,904. That is because we have a bunch of stacks of cold blooded. If I throw this down, and we take a look at my armor now. I now have 11,476 armor. That means we're negating about 1,147 damage when we get hit. So we do take a little bit of damage from our grenade, but that's fine because at that point, the enemies aren't going to be able to do a whole lot of damage to us. So I want to show you the difference here. I'm going to go to a spot where I can just let the enemy shoot me and I'm going to let cold blooded drop off. Okay. We no longer have cold blooded and I'm just going to throw a couple grenades out here and see if we can get some of these people angry at us. So we'll throw one out there and get them to shoot at us. Okay, here we go. So look, they're shooting at me right now. Look at them hit me. Look at how little damage they do. Okay. So let's throw a grenade down here. Okay, so we took damage from our grenade. Now look at them shoot me. They can't actually do damage. As you can see, we also have burn on us right now, which does not affect us because this build is immune to burn. It is immune to poison. It is immune to shock and it is immune to bleed. This build is completely immune to all negative status effects. On top of that, because we have this implant right here when we do get burnt by whatever a gun or overheat or whatever else it increases our damage by 10 percent there is an assault in progress up here and i want to go do it and i want to show you how the build plays out just taking out an assault in progress real quick all right so the assault in progress is right over there we're standing over here at a good sniper point because i want to show off how good the sniping is in this this is mainly what the build is for so we're going to slow down time. Uh, this is going to give the enemies no time to react. We're going to quickly reload our gun here. We're going to go to another one. We're going to quickly reload our gun again. As we kill targets, our reload time becomes faster and faster and faster. We're going to shoot another one. That may or may not be a headshot. I don't care at this point. Okay, so now uh, we're just going to dodge, keep time slowed down as long as we can, try to shoot that guy back there. And then uh, look, time's off, slow down again. I can slow down time again. And we we have plenty of time we can take our time find our targets they're all over and there we go now let's say for a situation uh that uh i want to just get in here and just go ham well we can do that as well that guy's on fire now and he's going to die and uh we are also on fire which is good for us because that increases our damage and uh now he should be on fire yeah there they're all dead and we got one guy left i can slow down time immediately again and uh where is he here we got plenty of time to look for him it doesn't really matter and uh he's dead that's the build now granted this is level 50 the build is capped out and this is what you're aiming towards but even before it's not capped out you are going to be this strong it is insanely strong build insanely versatile build because you have the close range and you have your distance you don't have to aim your distance shot. It's literally the easiest sniper build in the world because you don't even have to aim. I want to show you how ridiculous this is. Okay, so we're, we got we got guys right here. Okay, I'm going to slow down time. Uh, I can't really see them. They're kind of iffy. All right, uh, bam. Uh, bam. And last but not least, I don't even know if it's going to be a headshot, but honestly, it doesn't matter if it's a headshot. Okay, so that's the Hand of God build. It is an insanely strong, insanely versatile OP build that just allows you to absolutely decimate your targets before they have the slightest clue what is happening or can even react to your attacks. 
If you use this build and you like it, let me know down in the comments section. If you have any ideas on how this build can be made better, let me know down in the comments section. I for one would love to see much larger numbers if we can get even more than a million damage. We don't always hit for a million. It seems to be rare depending on how much armor the target has, but it's nice when we do see those insanely large numbers and I'd like to see them even bigger. So if you have any tips on how we can further increase the damage, let me know. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see others like it, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other cyberpunk videos. And I don't just upload cyberpunk videos, I upload guides for all kinds of different games, so you never know when I'm going to be uploading a guide for a game you may be playing. It just so happens that cyberpunk is the feature game on the channel right now. Alright, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Elite Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.